and welcome to the Made It In Music podcast. Today we're talking with Chris Greenwood about how to grow your fan base on Spotify. He is better known by his stage name Manifest, a Canadian Christian rock and hip hop artist. He has released 11 albums over his illustrious career and has been nominated for multiple Dove and Juno awards. At 1 million monthly listeners, Chris has seen lots of success on Spotify. He's here today to share his story as well as giving some tips and tricks to grow your Spotify numbers as well. This was recorded along with our live online audience from our Song Chasers community. You can learn more about Song Chasers at joinsongchasers.com. For now, let's dive into the episode. All right, all right. What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. I had to look and see what I, day it was. I also like, didn't know. <laughs> these, days, these, these weeks are just kind of yeah. blurring together. Yeah. But um, hey, I'm super excited that you all are on today. We've got a good one in store for you my buddy chris greenwood aka manifest <laughs> the house with us awesome yeah. <laughs> got a good crew on today uh this month our theme is making money in music and uh today ties directly into that yeah so we're gonna be excited. talking about you want to share a little bit what we're what he's gonna be talking about today yeah yeah and i'll obviously let him talk a little bit more about this but um obviously uh chris you've kind of you've got a lot of uh monthly listeners on spotify and um and i know that you know that ties directly with of course making money but um yeah we just wanted to kind of dive a little bit more into you know the tips and tricks of of kind of how to how to do that and so um yeah, yeah so and, 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 right and she's and she's uh when she says a lot of monthly listeners <laughs> eight hundred and ninety-eight thousand five hundred and forty-four monthly listeners to be exact you've got songs with close to 40 million streams on them yeah and it's just amazing to see you're you're doing it you know largely on an independent level mm -hmm. so it's yeah. It's uh, it's it's inspiring to see how you've been hustling it, seeing these songs get out there, and you're you're making real money doing it. So I'm excited for our group for Song Chasers yeah. to get to learn from you today. So um, why don't you guys give a nice virtual hand clap, warm <laughs> welcome, all the way from way up north near Toronto for Manifest being on with us today. Yeah, dude, it's an honor to be here. Look at all these amazing faces and smiles. I love Zoom. This is great. And, uh, you know, it's it's wild, Seth, because we've known each other for a long time and known each other from touring, and that's how we made our income. And I remember when you kind of came off the road and songwriting became a full thing for you. And for me, it wasn't until 2019 where I took a break from the road and um, before COVID and focused on songwriting and releasing songs. And, um, and, I, and, and, and I remember because, like, I was over the road and I remember you were just so happy to be off the road. And there's nothing, I love the road. I love playing shows. I'm sure some people play that love to play shows, but um, I don't love driving through the night. I don't love hitting deer and hitting Fox with our truck. And I don't like uh, uh, over the night drives anymore. And it's amazing that you can actually make a living from music off of Spotify. And I'll show you guys some cool stuff tonight. Like there, you know, Apple Music is awesome. I probably a ton of artists make money from from there. Amazon, um, obviously YouTube, but I'll, I'll just be straight up honest. Like the majority of my money comes from Spotify, and it's just been such an amazing um, tool for artists that allows us to pitch to these editorial playlists and connect with our fans. Like just the way they've set it up is just there's been nothing like it as far as I've seen, and it's just been a real blessing. And uh, Seth, like you, we were chatting, and we we're just because I was saying, yeah, I'm just writing songs full time and doing TV film a little bit, but mostly just my artist stuff. And I remember you saying like, yeah, that's what everybody wants, you know, for the most part. And um, I really enjoyed it. Not that I hate on the um, on the uh, the touring side. I, I miss it a lot. But I felt like, you know, I was touring sometimes to try and build the fan base. And I really believe that it's like, well, build the fan base. So there's a reason to tour, you know, tour because there's fans. Um, but the only reason I've been able to make a full-time living off of my music is because I'm independent and I got my records back, you know, when me and Seth were touring back together in 2010, 11, I think it was, um, there was a time where the label still owned my masters. And when someone streams your song on, uh, on Spotify, let's just stay there. And it's the same thing with Apple Music. There's two royalties generated. There's the master side, and then there's the royalty side, the publishing side, the songwriter side, which all you guys are probably familiar about, right? It's the songwriting. 
And both are very important. But when it comes to Spotify and sales of your album, believe it or not, the master side is the, 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 big, the, the person that owns the record. That's the big chunk of money. Publishing is awesome. We, we love that too. But like, just to give you an idea, like, and Seth, correct me if I'm wrong, but like, for what I've seen, like, it's almost like 10 times the amount or more. Like when I look at my master side, well, you've written a lot more songs though. Um, but when I look at my master side from royalties compared to the publishing, it's like, you know, when you're looking at tens of thousands in a month compared to a quarterly publishing, um, you know, it's just not even comparable for me personally. And that's just because the master side is so much bigger. But Seth, do you want to say anything on that? Yeah, I mean, I, just for real numbers, I mean, a, a million streams on the master side equates to about $5,000. A million streams on the publishing side equates to about $750. And the that's reason why... The whole song. <laughs> yeah, that's if you wrote the whole song. That's $750 divided by you know, maybe there's three songwriters on it. So that's where Chris is talking about. Um, it can very well be over 10 times the amount if you're the sole master owner of a, of a song. So yeah. I definitely can confirm that. Yeah. So it's, 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 you know, so it's, that's why it's important to own your masters, but you know, when it comes into it and, and we'll jump into Spotify in a second here, but like we're publishing and I never want to like, you know, poo poo on publishing here. Like when you get a sync placement, all of a sudden publishing is extremely important because, you know, you get a $10,000 sync placement that's chopped in half. 50% goes to the master and then 50% goes to the, the songwriters. And all of a sudden you're like, okay, I wish I wrote on that song and uh, publishing is, you know, so it, it both are important, but when it comes to this specifically on Spotify and streaming, I just want to say that you want to be the master owner um, as much as you can. Now, the opportunity on Spotify and, and, and how to be successful on it for what I've seen is by releasing singles. Okay. Um, albums aren't dead, but we live in a singles economy. And so what we did for our last album, I run with wolves is I think there's 12 songs on here and we released nine of them as singles. Okay. Some people call this the waterfall strategy. We released one song, waited a month and a bit, then released another one, um, then waited maybe another month and then another one and just planned out our release, right? And then eventually we released the whole album. Um, can you hold on one second? Someone is at my door and my, my, just give me one second. I just want to make sure my door. No worries. It's, it's honestly, it's probably the money man coming to deliver a giant check of his <laughs> millions of Spotify streams. This is just how successful he is. He has a guy that shows up to the door with one of those giant checks, you know, like oh my the, gosh, like the publishing clearing house. The publisher's like, clearing house. <laughs> yeah, it's like your five thing. million streams. Here's a ginormous check. <laughs> oh, wouldn't that be Man, how cool would that be? That'd be crazy. We'd that would be real special. That would make it feel a little more. Can we do that for you? Oh, I, I would <laughs> actually be so excited about that. <laughs> oh my gosh. It almost doesn't feel real because most of most everything's digital nowadays. Right, right. So you're just like a like you get cool. a deposit. I mean, it's nice. It's convenient, right? You get a deposit <laughs> yeah. right to your account. But like, there was something about when I got my first actual royalty check in the mail, yeah. and you take a picture it of it. Like, like, yeah, I remember. It wasn't a lot. It was like tangible. Yeah, like, it's you're... tangible. It was like four hundred dollars, and I remember just freaking out over like, wow, like these songs that I made made four hundred dollars. And you know, fa fast forward to to today. I mean, it's like. Spotify has has made a, a whole new world possible in terms of what you can do. So, um, Chris, you back with us? Yeah, so sorry about that. Just, You're good. Uh, I'm uh, looking after my daughter. My mom and sister aren't here yet. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Good. And the the pizza man was delivering dinner. So, <laughs> thanks. Uh, real yeah. life. Real life. Real life here, guys. You're getting the realness. <laughs> <laughs> but what I was saying was about releasing singles. Um, leading up to the album. And the reason I was doing this is because I want a chance to pitch my songs to the editorial playlist. Okay, on Spotify, to their curators. Has anybody gotten on an editorial playlist before? <laughs> Does anybody want to get on an editorial playlist? Um, well, what happens is I use DistroKid, right, to distribute my music. Maybe you guys use CD Baby, maybe you use TuneCore. And you want to schedule your release 
you're single at least three to four weeks ahead. None of this getting it back from your engineer going, oh, I got my song back. Put it up online right away. Don't do that. Don't do that. You got to plan it out for a lot of reasons. And the, uh, obviously planning it, having a successful release. But what we're talking about tonight is so you can pitch it to the Spotify curator. And I'm going to show you that in a second. And so when you upload it to your distributor, your DSP, again, DistroKid, TuneCore, CD Baby, it takes between 24 and 72 hours for it to show up in your Spotify dashboard. And the website for that is artists.spotify.com. I'm gonna show you that in a second. It takes 24 to 72 hours. And so um, Spotify needs at least seven days minimum for you to pitch it to their curators. So that means if you, know, you wanted to release it, that, well, you couldn't release it this Friday or you could, but then you can't pitch it. If you wanted to release it next Friday, like you're cutting it close. Don't, don't do that because 24 to 72 hours minimum, right? And so what I want to show you here, um, let me pull this up. Got a few windows open. Here we go. Can you guys see that okay, my dashboard? And what yes. I love about Spotify is it shows you how many people are listening to your song right now. Like, that's just so cool to me, man, that we have this data, right? And so see here, artist.spotify.com. And you need to claim your profile with your, your, your distributor, right? So that you claim your artist profile and you log in. But then once you've distributed your song, you've uploaded it, you click on music and you click on upcoming and it'll show right here where you pitch it, right? And you can only pitch one song at a time. And so I actually pitched this one today to my students. We have a cover song coming out January 13th, okay? So I'm a month ahead, woo! All right, so I pitched this actually five hours ago. And if I click on manage release, uh, let's show, let me, sh let me do that. Let me show the pitch. I don't know if it's gonna show me right here. Ah, view playlist pitch. So when you do this, it's gonna ask you questions like, What's your hometown? What genres? So if you're pop, classical, alternative rock, whatever you are, it'll ask you to choose three genres. It'll ask like what your music culture is. It has Christian in there, Arabic, all kinds of different music cultures. I chose none. Sometimes I release a song as a Christian artist. Sometimes I don't. It'll ask you for different moods of the song. Is it chill? Is it fierce? Um, ask you what the instruments are ask if it's a cover or not. For me, this is my second cover song I've ever done. And so I said, yes. Is it a remix? No. Um, was the recording um, uh, live or was it in studios? In studios, an instrumental? No. And it even asks uh, the language. And then it asks you for a description. And this is really important that you fill this out. Do not leave this blank. And so I normally say like, hey, Spotify team, uh, in the end, by Linkin Park is one of my favorite songs. So I'm kind of telling the story behind it. And this is something new I've been doing. This would be a great fit for Rock Covers playlist. And then I put the little prayer hands and I actually included the playlist. I've heard Spotify likes this. Cause it's like, you know, you wanna get on a playlist. Uh, have you done your research to, to, to know which ones you wanna get on? And then you could even suggest it. Cause like, like we assume everybody like, we, we get so close to our babies, right? And we assume everybody knows us, but they don't. So imagine just a stranger at Spotify doesn't know your music or anything like that. Like you got to point them in the right direction. Like what you sound like, oh, it'd be a good fit for that playlist. Oh, well, I know that playlist. And then they start to put the pieces together, right? And then I always put my marketing plan there because they want to know what you're going to do to promote it. And so I'll tell them I'm running marquee ads and Facebook ads and all that stuff that I'm going to email the list. Um, I don't need to show you all that right now, but like if you're going on tour, any syncs, any stories, any accolades, any bragging rights that you can talk about that, like we're going to promote this song. Like what's your, your, your plan to promote it? And if you don't have anything, then just share the story and what inspired it. Talk about the, it was produced by Seth Mosley or it was produced by, you know, Grammy award winning this, like try and tap into whatever you can, you know, just don't leave it blank can i get some amens in the chat there um because and also put a link to your social media because i've heard spotify also likes to um to uh to see you know about the artist now 
I think it's so important that you focus on one genre, one genre. Um, I do more of the metal rock, hard rock stuff. And I've noticed like maybe the first few songs that I pitched didn't get on editorial playlists. But when I kept on releasing songs in the same genre, all of a sudden Spotify classifies you as a certain style of artist. And so it was amazing. Once I started getting one playlist after a song, and then I started getting another one, and I started getting another one. And then I remember, and I, I never told you this, Seth, but I did like a TV films, right? So, you, you know, I do those with a lot of guys when we release songs, and they're not normally in the metal genre or the rock genre, because those aren't as popular as a sync thing right now. It could turn around. But um, I released this kind of more hip hop song. And Spotify is like, well, we don't know you in, in, in that regard. And so I didn't get a playlist. And it's happened a couple of times now. So I really believe in the power of focus. Follow one course until successful. Um, do you want to pick up on any questions there or field anything there before I keep being? Yeah, able to no, I, I agree 100%. I think a lot of people um, have a lot of different styles and, and they, 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 they feel limited by committing to like a genre. Like I love hip hop and I love blues and I love rap, but my advice to that has always been, you can, you can always create multiple projects. Like you can have a side project, you can have different monikers for stuff. Obviously the more multiple projects you have bouncing around, the less focus you'll be able to commit to each one of them. But that is a way that, hey, if one of your projects is hip hop, curate it according to what genre you're in and to what you're pitching to. It it might be frustrating artistically to hear, but it just kind of is the way that it is. And I think you're you're right on the money there. I've even I've even talked to people about like if you start out as a Christian artist and 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 sort of list yourself as a Christian artist on Spotify, it can be hard for the curators to look and, and if you release something that's like pop or rock or alternative they don't love seeing that it's like it's it's yeah. for whatever reason like really having a focus and picking a lane for your project is super super important so i just I, yeah, I, I that, great. And, and i had the same thing happen to me because uh i released some christian songs and i got new christian friday but then it took a while i think to get me out of that lane and it's not that i didn't want to be classified as a christian or anything like that it's just that i wanted bigger opportunities there's bigger playlists and i wasn't really doing that and so it's like by trying to keep switching to genres and imagine trying to do that at radio like all the relationships that christian radio are different than active rock are different than country and like you know trying to break an artist at one radio format compared to like trying to break them at all three like let alone we know how hard it is just to even get known on one and so this is just the power of focus everywhere right like that's just that's a the lesson on itself tonight um jolie is saying you can only pitch a song not an ep or album right that's right and so here's what i want to uh share is that like so i released a single each time and so i pitched that song if i released like four songs I could only pitch one, all right? I could only pitch one. You can only pitch one at a time, right? And I want to show you the difference. Well, before I do that, like, and the reason, not only is it for the editorial playlist why it's so important, but it also triggers Spotify's algorithm and the release radar notifying all your followers. Like, if you got a ton of followers and you don't pitch it, not only will the editors not find about it, but your fans won't find out about it. And I want to show you what I mean by that. Second here. So let's close out of here. So for instance, this song that just came out about a week and a bit ago, the song Crawling. As you can see here, if I click on playlists, I can see release radar is the majority of my streams already, right? And that's the algorithmic playlist. I wouldn't have got any of those if I didn't pitch that song. I didn't get any editorial playlists on this one. Um, this is a playlist I control. This is an algorithmic playlist. And we're gonna talk about, before we leave tonight, how powerful Spotify's algorithm is. Um, this is just like an independent playlist. But um, what I wanna show you is, if I go to releases and, 
so this is my album that I released, right? And as I was telling you, I released, this is a single. This one was a single. Basically, all of these were singles except for one. And it did not get pitched to the editorial playlist and release radar was not notified. And it was this song right here, Doomsday. This is an intro, so this isn't classified as a song. Can anybody see the difference between this song compared to all the other ones, especially in the numbers? Can we see a difference in the chat, please? This is the only one that has not broken six figures. Seth would charge me just as much for this song as he would charge me for all these other songs to produce my song. So the chances of me recouping on this are not happening, okay? So what I should have done here is I should have um, held this back digitally. I could have kept it on the physical, but I should have held this back, released this as a single, then maybe released another one of these as an acoustic, and then another song uh, maybe as a remix, and then released this song as a deluxe version of I Run With Wolves. You guys picking up what I'm putting down here? I literally like, like all those songs cost me as much. And you know, what's really annoying. I was hanging out with my fans the other night and somehow that song Doomsday got brought up and all my fans were telling me how much they love it. I'm like, oh, well, that's, that's great. And, and it made me realize like it didn't really see the light of day. And so what, what do you do? Like, what, 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 what can we do to fix that? Some of you, I bet you've released all your songs. You're like, crap, now I can't pitch any of them. Well, you could do an acoustic version of it and re-release it. You could do a remix. You could re-release it and get a big feature on it. That's one thing that we're thinking of doing is getting a big feature on it and re-releasing that song so I can get the, get the bang for my buck out of that, right? Um, just looking at some of the questions here. Can you pitch a song that you released a year ago but you have not pitched yet? Well, spot If it is streamed on Spotify or been released, it cannot be pitched i know it's so sad um this whole album before i knew about this we like we we released a whole bunch of songs and and then just we, we we released it all as an album and missed out on all that um someone's asking about changing the release date so if you've scheduled your release and it hasn't come out yet you can change the date and push it back but you just again you got to give uh, your dis and that would happen with your distributor specifically um to do that i know we had uh an ep scheduled and i actually changed the date so that was that was good um seth or riley do you guys want to add to any of that yeah i i was actually looking for um there was a billboard article that i um read recently about the power of algorithmic playlists on spotify and when Spotify playlists started out, it was like, it was everything like a Spotify playlist and, and they still are very powerful, but they don't do what they used to. Like if you were on the rap caviar playlist with a big, you know, hip hop mainstream playlist, that would pretty much guarantee you get like 50 million streams. <laughs> yeah. Now, now it might, now it might, you might get 10 million from that same spot. Now that's just because of market saturation, but it's also because of the way people are interacting with Spotify, they like the other algorithmic playlists where Spotify just serves you up what to listen to based off of that, your, your other tastes and preferences. So even if you don't, it's more of an encouragement than anything. Like even if you don't get added to a curated playlist, there can be a lot of traction to be gained just from those algorithms. Mm -hmm. So time. that's yeah. that dude, that's a great segue. Yeah. Like just because I didn't get the playlist, for this last song, I'm still promoting, I'm still pushing it. What am I doing? I'm running Facebook, Instagram ads. Um, I might run some Spotify ads. Um, we'll post social media, try and, you know, um, we'll try and uh, get some viral posts. And I might share you guys a really cool video to encourage you to keep promoting. Um, but well, I, I, I want to, I want to backtrack a little bit to, to your pitch. I mean, the, the thing that a lot of people, they put a lot of pressure on Spotify basically to make a career for them. And you like just pitching to a Spotify playlist cannot be your only marketing strategy. Mm -hmm. Like 
in your playlist pitch, you had listed like, hey, what's my actual marketing plan in addition to what I'm doing right now, which is the pitch. And, you know, you're like, okay, well, I've got ad budget set aside to, to spend on Spotify ads or on Facebook ads or Instagram ads or whatever. Or I have X amount of followers that I'm sending this out to. It's just, you have to have those other things too. Yeah. Uh, social influencers. Um, if you want to pay them like micro influencers, um, we, we did some of that. I found some, some in the rock niche and, um, I look for those micro influencers are ones anywhere from 10 to 50,000. And, um, you can get a post for like 20, 40 bucks and they've got tens of thousands of, of followers. And, um, when you get to the 50 to a hundred thousand followers, you're going to pay a lot more. But yeah, these are all the different things that we're doing to market the song. Like, yeah, definitely just hoping on an editorial playlist is, is definitely not a plan. Um, running ads, so Spotify's algorithm eventually picks it up. That is a strategy. And, you know, the song we did, I think I shared this over dinner with you, Seth, is our song Firestarter. When that originally came out, it didn't like, it didn't like blow up. Okay, this is on Firestarter. In fact, it was the remix, if it's here. Oh, that's not it. Where is it? The remix, and it actually has, I think, still more. Yeah, the remix is the one that actually took off. And then it wasn't until, I don't know, a few months ago. I can't remember when it was. And all of a sudden, Spotify's algorithm grabbed a hold of this. And I want to show you. And this is the cool thing, too, guys. And I hope it encourages you to, to do um, a remix to breathe new life into your song. So song wasn't like a, a failure, but it was like, you know, getting a few thousand streams a day. But then Spotify's algorithm grabs a hold of it, you know, 15,000 streams, all the way up to 21, 20, uh, 21,000 streams in a day, right? And, um, you know, it's dropped off a bit. And part of this is also Spotify's discovery mode. But right now it's still doing like, you know, 12,000 streams. And Spotify, the algorithm needs data, right? And so it's, it's trying to see, is someone saving this to a playlist? What's the skip rate? Like, are they skipping it after 30 seconds? Are they sharing it? Are they adding it to playlists? Like it's collecting all this data. And based on that reaction, it's like, oh, well, this type of person would like that. And so it's going to start sharing it out into these algorithmic playlists. And once you do that, once that happens, you can't spend enough on Facebook ads or Spotify ads or whatever compared to what the algorithm can do. Like that was my big revelation. Like, yeah, I start and I, I got to get this plane off the ground, right? I got to get some gas behind it, some money. But then once that algorithm, if the song is good, good marketing only makes a bad song fail faster, but you guys are with Seth, so you guys only write good songs. So, you know, um, but it's, you got to push it hard enough, long, long enough. And some of you might ask, well, how long do you need to push a, a song for? I always say 30 to 60 days of constant data to Spotify to, for Spotify. You don't want just some big spike. You want to keep feeding it over a period of time. You guys, uh, any questions on that? Yeah, I got some good, good ones in the chat. Um, Neil, just to, to hit on this, how do you inform Spotify that you own the master? If you release it yourself through DistroKid, you don't have to. It's like it's all it's automatically taken care of. Mm -hmm. um, is Don Bailey asked, is putting your song on SoundCloud considered a release? Same for posting it one day on your Facebook social page. Um, I, I think we're talking about a little bit two different things here. I almost look at SoundCloud as like the... Uh, like the mixtape version mm -hmm. it's like hey i can post my demos and stuff on there it would almost be like posting a snippet on tiktok or instagram or something like that's how i look at soundcloud um yeah, so much make a lot of money from there like i haven't like blown up there or anything like that like we make a little bit of money but and we've had some songs like take off but it hasn't been like crazy but i know for some artists it's quite the income stream um sure. i can't say that i'm a pro on that though but I say be everywhere, you know, you have to upload that manually there though. Cause like the distributors won't distribute it there for you. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's keep plowing. We'll, we'll definitely have, uh, some dedicated Q and a time at the end. So if anybody's got questions, we're moving quick, definitely uh, stick around for a little bit and we'll make sure everything gets answered. Yeah. So just coming back to that algorithm, like 
that's what's like wild to me in in the idea of this whole catalog and songs that you that you know were how many years old can all of a sudden like take off um uh i know we're we're, we're talking about uh spotify tonight but when 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 like something goes viral on social media like tiktok or something like that and you're promoting the song um that can drive streams and it can drive sales um one of my students i think her name is katie i can't remember her last name but um she uh she was like exhausted she was tired and she didn't want to post and it was during christmas and she thought you know what i'm just going to sit down on the carpet and pull out my phone and 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 do one more quick little tiktok before i go down for christmas dinner and that was the one that blew up and so you know that itself like is a, is a strategy to grow your your streams on social media it's helped to hit i know specifically in the uk to help hit charts and all kinds of stuff and it has driven streams now does anybody hate TikTok like I do or just just jumped on it late or not a fan? And no one's telling you to do dancing videos. No one's telling you to do all this stuff. You don't have to do that. You just got to figure out your authentic voice and your angle and telling stories around your song. And you because you didn't write the song, you didn't spend the money to record it, make artwork, all this stuff just to only post about it once, right? But the problem is you need to spend some time and, and, and peel it back like an onion. Like onions have lots of layers, right? Well, what are all the stories behind the song? You travel into the studio, the inspiration behind the song, um, why you wrote it, you know, where were you when you wrote the lyrics? Who did the artwork? Who produced? Like there's so many stories and content that you could post. You just got to figure out how to do that in your voice. Because um, I want to share with you a guy that um, I don't know this, this dude, but this story just inspired me so much to not quit when it comes to promoting your song. Um, let me play this video and forgive. There is one little bad word at the end. I want to talk about this because I saw this comment and it made me self-conscious and I almost deleted the video. And the next day it got over 200,000 views on the free page. The video I posted that went viral, got 4 million views. It was the 35th time that I posted that song. So if you're a creator and you're chasing something, keep going and don't worry about this. If I had stopped on the 34th time, I would have fucking played myself. So 30 something times. Has anybody posted about their song 30 something times? Like, holy smokes, right? Like, blows my mind, like, just the commitment. And I know that drove crazy streams and money, and it was free. Now, you know, you could say it's not free in the sense of time, because you know what I mean? But, like, just the idea of not giving up. And it's like we post it three times, and we go, oh, this doesn't work. You know what I mean? Nobody likes my stuff. And the sad thing is, is what I've realized um the best song does not always win can i get an amen to that seth <laughs> the best song does not always win unfortunately not at radio not at spot it's the best marketed song you know it's the best marketed song and it's just you figuring out how to get that out there um and, and, and promoting it um a few months ago well it might have been longer now almost a year ago i had a whole bunch of labels from china emailing me all of a sudden and uh and they wanted to buy the rights to one of my songs and i was like oh okay and i was like so close to doing this deal and i did my due diligence and realized i'm already making money off of this from china i'm making a lot of money and i came to find out that this song um was being used by a lot of chinese influencers and in taiwan and like millions and millions of streams and this is, uh, again, the idea that it's not even always about, you know, you marketing the song, but other people getting a hold of it and making videos about it. Sometimes some of your best marketing budget could be doing a contest for all your fans and friends and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a contest um, for, for everyone that does a, does a, a, a TikTok with my, um, with my song or Instagram reel with my song is going to get entered to win a hundred dollar gift certificate on Amazon or something like that. And you get a whole bunch of entries and all this stuff. And that drives a ton of traffic 
to your to your Spotify, and then just one pops off, right? That's all you need is just is just one. And you yeah, don't... and to your to your point too, I don't know if you if you guys know of a guy named Warren Z, uh, Warren Ziders or Warren Zeters. I don't even know how to pronounce his name. Um, he had a massive TikTok hit last year, um, and my friend Ben Stennis was telling me about this last week. Um, it's that it's a song called Ride the Lightning. It's a terrible song. It's it's like horrible. But he posted it 97 different ways on TikTok. And it was that 97th time that it went viral. And it's gotten it's actually just gotten certified RIAA gold just off oh of TikTok gosh. talk streams. So that is wild, dude. You see, like that that's just crazy to me, man. Like it's just so wild. Um, what was I gonna say? This is the the same thing too, and I and and I heard Alex Harmozi talk about this. Is like I I know guys sometimes you don't want to post on social media, and it's because you just see it as input, and you feel like social media is taking from you more than you're getting from it, and maybe getting distracted and pulled in or whatnot. But what I realized is that like what these other artists that might not have as good as songs as you, but yet they're blowing up is because they show up for their fans and they've built this one thing and it's called community. Like we can all probably name artists that have way bigger fan bases than us in our genre and their music isn't as good, but they show up for their fans and they build this thing called community. I call my fans, my fighters. Seth happened to actually produce the song fighter. And it's it ended up becoming this like movement. And I call my fans that now. And I get this, my tribe. Uh, there's a book called Tribes by um, Seth Godin. Um, but just the idea of showing up for community. And honestly, I could do a way better job at it. Um, it but I've seen these artists that like, like seriously, like they, they sell crazy tickets, sell lives. To their, and the, the music is just, it's just, uh, but the way they show up for their fans and the way they bond, like I think about Lady Gaga, who used to say goodnight to her fans on Twitter. Like, like that's the kind of relationship she has with her fans. And that's how she treats social media. She doesn't treat it like a drag. She treats it like I get to do this and I get to communicate on that level. So I just encourage you guys to kind of change your 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 mindset around there. And then um I'll just share a couple last things about Spotify. And let's just open it up for QA. Um what I shared earlier about releasing singles, and, and I just want to encourage you, if you have an album, begin with the end in mind. Set a date. When does this album coming out? And then plan your singles backwards. Plan like three to four weeks backwards and then launch it. And once you've released the singles, when you finally upload the whole album, you want to make sure you grab the ISRC code from the original song and make sure you upload that when you release the album so you don't lose any of the streams and don't lose any of the playlists when you finally release the album okay so you release a single you could release and, and i and i really encourage you to release as many singles as you can because like otherwise i honestly feel when it comes to spotify it's a waste and am i the only one and let's just be honest on here you you just released the single and you're already talking about the other one to your spouse or your friend or your producer. It's like, it's out. It just came out and you're already talking about the next one. Okay. Don't do that. Focus. Right. Like, and that's what singles do. They force you to put a marketing campaign behind the next one. Cause once the album's out, you're like, Oh, my job's done. And, and you move on. And it's like, I already showed you with the release radar, like you miss out on so much opportunity and that's just Spotify let alone social media and everything else that you can do and and, you're, and, and sh keep showing up, right? Like, cause it's like, you just release the album and then you disappear for how long, right? And then all of a sudden you show up 12 months later and they're like, where is he? Where is she? I haven't, I haven't seen him. And, and one more thing I'll share I'm like, uh, and I'll shut up um, is we want people to support our music, but we, we don't even show up until it's out, you know, and people like to support that which they felt like they were a part of, but you didn't let me in on the songwriting. You didn't show me in the Uber car drive over to the studio. You didn't show me when you were writing the lyrics. You didn't show me when your producer said, you got to rewrite that melody. 
you didn't share with me when you got the mix back and it sounded so bad and you wanted to cry. Um, and, 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 and the process and the pain, right? Like you're good at painting the pain in the song, but you're not sharing the pain live. And that's what creates this bond. So I encourage you to share those stories. And I need to get better at that too, because it's I'm going to create more bond. And they're going to feel like they know me. And when they have that connection to me, then when I drop my song, they're going to want to uh, support. Last thing, don't say my new single is out. Go listen to it. That's like the most artist speak like ever. How about I wrote this song because I struggled with this. I wrote this song about because of the social justice issue. Da, 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 da. She broke my heart. I caught her cheating. I caught him cheating on me. Da, da, da. You know what I'm saying? Like, talk about the song. No one wants to hear, listen to my new single. Listen to my new single. Like, we're trying to break through, right? Is that making sense? I hope that helps somebody freed some people up tonight. Yeah, that's great. I, I two two really big takeaways, and then I do want to open it up to some Q and A. But the biggest thing is number one, people who are listening and interested in making money in music. Number one, I'm just gonna state the obvious: it takes a lot of work. It's like anything. There's there's no shortcuts. There's no magic. Like, hey, download this thing or hire this person, and all of a sudden you're gonna make a ton of money. It's consistency. It's getting the reps in. It's it's honestly the numbers, like releasing a lot of stuff and showing up and promoting. Can't buy a fan base. Can't buy a fan base, man. You cannot buy a fan base. They have to. You have to earn it. And so that's the first thing. But number two, I also hope you're encouraged to know that hey, you don't have to be with a major label to do it. This is accessible to any of us. Um, I think Chris would tell you his life has probably gotten a lot better since he's not working with a label. <laughs> and um, so I just I, I want us to all be encouraged of that is you don't need to wait for a record deal or a publishing deal to uh, to come along and make things work for you. That's you just you just got to learn how the platforms work and make them work for you. So um, I just wanted to end on that. Yeah. And um, yeah, with that, let's uh, open it up to some Q&A. Uh, Chris, is there anything else you want to say? We jump into some Q and A. Uh, I love how real you are, and just the honesty. Like it's true. Like it's it's a lot of hard work, and you're you're seeing halfway through the movie. You weren't with me and Seth. You know, I think we always played pretty good shows, but there's a lot of shows. There's not many people there, and there's just a lot of disappointment and discouragement. But what's so cool though is like I don't feel like any of those songs or the time was wasted. It was all an investment because like I'm still making money from my music like right now like i showed you there's people streaming my music right now it's what i call sales while i sleep soundly or streams while i sleep soundly and it's a beautiful and it's a freedom it, it can really provide a freedom lifestyle but you like you said dude you got to invest in it long enough and stay in the game exactly um but before we do some q a how can people uh find more out about you and learn from you i know you you mentioned you got some students if people want to interact with you how can they how can they find you and your your materials yeah i'm on youtube uh smart music business they should definitely go there um uh, i have a challenge i do once a month we're doing it right now but there's another one next month uh if they just go to 10x your fan base.com forward slash live challenge they can find out um about that i know we'll be sending out a thing later for that um i can pop it in the, the chat if they want um and then we can uh, they can find me there. I got I'm on a, I'm on Apple iTunes podcast as well too. Um, but yeah, it's an yeah. honor to serve you guys tonight. Highly recommend checking that out, and we'll definitely be uh, spreading the word. I think next mm -hmm. month about it as well too. But yes. feel free to go ahead and check that out. And definitely for those of you who are listening on replay um, or on the podcast, um, we will be dropping some links for you guys to um, hopefully go check out Chris's challenge um, for the January challenge. Um, and so y'all can uh, go to that link that he dropped, but I will also be pasting it in the description and all of the things. So you will find it, I promise. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Made It in Music podcast. In addition to this episode, we also recorded a Q&A session where some of the songwriters in our Song Chasers community were able to ask their own questions. We'll release that episode shortly after this one. 
Make sure to check out some of the other episodes of the Made It in Music podcast as well. We have well over 100 interviews with some of the top music industry professionals, many here in Nashville and many from all over the world. Subscribe to make sure that you automatically get future episodes and leave us a review if you loved it. It would really help us out. Or send an email to support at fullcirclemusic.com if you have any ideas for how we can improve the show. If you'd like to become a Song Chasers member and attend these training sessions live, head over to joinsongchasers.com to learn more. You also get additional exclusive trainings from me. You get our Track Suite Pro software. You get song reviews from me and my team. And you get access to a custom social media network we created exclusively for songwriters and musicians. There's nothing else like it on the internet. Go to joinsongchasers.com to learn how to join and check out madeitinmusic.com for more content and episodes from this podcast. See you in the next episode.